Hi again, everyone. In this video, we're going to finish our exploration into first order ordinary differential equations. And um, we've looked at all these topics in previous videos. Um, we've looked at two special kinds of ordinary differential equations, or ODEs. We've looked at separable and linear and their solution techniques. And in this video, we're going to look at yet another type of ODE known as an exact ordinary differential equation. So we're going to define what they are and then look at their solution methods. And then, of course, we're going to do some examples. So, Many kinds of ODEs can be written in the following form. Okay? Now, here, the M and the N are just functions of two variables, just two given functions. Okay? And rem remember, what we're trying to, to do when faced with, say, an, an ODE like this is to ex extract the solution, the unknown function Y of X that satisfies this now, if you look at the left-hand side, what we're going to try to do is to formulate conditions under which the left-hand side will be equal to the derivative of some function big F of x, comma, y. So this function big F depends on two things, x the, uh, and y, uh, and what we're going to try to do is formulate conditions on this big M and this big N such that the derivative of this will equal the whole left-hand side. Now, remember, if the derivative with respect to x of this satisfies this, then I can integrate both sides and, and, and solve. Okay, that's the, the basic idea. Okay, so... Suppose we have a function, big F of x comma y equals a constant. Now, if I differentiate both sides of this expression with respect to x, then the chain rule uh, from an earlier video will give you the following expression. Okay, So um, just to sort of fill everyone in, the chain rule can be formulated from a simple picture. Big F depends on X and Y, and Y depends on X. So to formulate D big F DX, you go down the branches, forming a derivative when you go from letter to letter. So DF DX would be uh, partial DF DX plus DF DY to Y DX, and we get this. Of course, if you differentiate a constant, you'll get zero. So this follows from this. Now, let's go back and compare. If, okay, if m was df dx and n was df dy, then I could solve this original equation because these two things would be actually equal. I could just integrate both sides and out would pop some sort of x, uh, implicit form for my unknown function. Okay? So if this is true, then you could reverse the above steps, integrate both sides, and you get some sort of implicit representation. You don't have y equals something. You have a function involving y equals a constant. Okay? Now this is a big if by the way. So the problem is to construct some general function, big F, such that this holds for given functions M and N. Okay? Now, these functions don't always exist, but such an F will exist when these two partial derivatives are equal. 
Okay, so this is known as the test for exactness, right? Now I'm also sort of I haven't written this down, but these you know m and n need to be continuous functions, and and these partials not only not only do they need to be equal, but they need to be continuous as well. Okay. All right, so to see this, let x0, y0 be a point that the solution will pass through, and let big F be defined by this kind of nasty-looking integral. You can then show that just by taking df dy, the partial, and df dx, just by differentiating here, that you'll get these two things holding. Okay, but when we're actually solving problems, we don't we don't really start with this. We basically start with these and solve solve these two uh, expressions via in, or equations via integration. Okay, so this is the important information here. Okay, so let's do a problem and see how it all works. Solve the following ordinary differential equation. Now, the first thing you probably notice is that the dy dx is split up into a so-called differential form. And this form is, is quite common, a, a common way of writing exact equations. So here, m would be this first function, and n would be this second function. Now, the first thing we need to do is to actually test the equation to see if it really is exact. If it is exact, then the previous methods will, will, will go through. So let's, let, let's remember our test for exactness. So I'm going to label this star. And the, the, the important question is, oops, is star exact? OK? In other words, does m sub y, or dm dy, equal n sub x, dn dx. So this is the important OK. Now, because these are polynomials, then they're, the continuity of the partial derivatives are all satisfied. That's not a big deal. So let's work out these partial derivatives and then compare them. All right, so m sub y is we differentiate with respect to y while holding all the other variables fixed. So m sub y is going to be 1. M sub, uh, n sub x, differentiate everything with respect to x while holding the other variables fixed. We also get 1. So if, if we compare them, then yes, they are equal. We have equality. And so our ODE is exact. All right, so let, let, let's go on to the solution method now. Basically, what, what this does is it guarantees that the method we're going to apply will work. So it's very important. If you miss this out, then you may run into a lot of problems because your OD may not be exact, and so for, uh, and and so you may, the method may not work. Okay. All right. So this is important. Assume our solution Y is, I guess, contained in the following form. Okay. Uh, with the following. Okay, so we've assumed that our solution Y is implicitly defined 
by this equation. And what we want to do is construct or generate this big F, this big F function. Okay? So what we do is go, okay, let's look at the partials of big F and compare them with these, I guess, you know, these coefficients here, or these functions. Okay, so... All right, so we get to the following situation. We've got two equations, and we're going to integrate both of those equations to produce some sort of form for big F. Okay, so over here, I'm going, it seems natural to integrate both sides with respect to x, and over here, I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to y. That will leave f over here and f over here, and then we'll compare the two expressions for big F. So, over here I integrate with respect to x, so the first one is going to just give me big F, so I'm going to have x squared here, plus xy, plus x, so basically I've imagined everything is a constant except for x, and integrated normally. Okay, but there's a little twist here. The constant of integration is not necessarily a constant. You need to put in some sort of function involving y, okay, because partial derivatives are involved. Right, so this is not necessarily a constant, it's a function of the other variable, y. So that's what so, so so this is derived from this. Let's integrate both sides of this expression with respect to y. Okay, so we integrate normally with respect to y, imagine all the x's are constant. And again, there'll be some function of integration, say h of x. All right, so now what we do is compare, compare these two expressions for big F and choose g of y and h of x so that everything here is equal. All right, we can see we already have some common terms. So how do we choose g of y and h of x to make these two things equal? Well, if we chose h of x to be x squared plus x and g of y to be y squared plus y, then the two expressions would be one and the same. Okay? So we compare... All right, g of y is going to be y squared plus y, and h of x is going to be x squared plus x. So we take those two things, well, we, we take either of these, put in g of y, say, and remember our solution is assumed to be of this form, okay? So we'll write down our particular f. Okay, so for our particular problem, this is the form of our solution. Okay, now note that it's in a form called the implicit form. I don't necessarily have something like y equals a function of x. It's a bit messy, but um, it, it's the best that we can do in many cases. Okay, so let's review what we've done there. The first very, very important step is to actually check to see that our problem really is exact. Okay? So d are these partial derivatives equal? If they are equal, then we can go ahead and assume that our solution, y, is, I guess, implicitly defined within this bigger function, big F, of two variables. Okay? We then look at the partials of F and set them equal to these functions here, these coefficients. From those two, I guess, partial uh, 
differential equations, we integrate both sides and then form two expressions for our, our big F. We compare, find our functions of integration, and then write down our particular solution. Okay. Let's do another problem. Here we have been given the following ODE and it's just been split up into this differential type form. Okay, we're asked to solve it. The first question is, is it actually exact? Can we apply the methods that we've just learnt here? Well, let's, let's have a look. So, in this particular example, the function m is given here, the function n is given here, and we want to test those functions to see if, if we really have an exact ODE. So let's, let's pose the question, is star exact? So we have the following. So we, we, we test m sub y and n sub x, well, we calculate them, and then we want them to be equal. So, m sub y, d, dm dy, what's that going to be? That's going to be 2x plus 6x squared y. And then, oops, n. n sub x is going to be 2x plus 6x squared y. Okay, so if we compare these two, then we have equality, right? So, we've clearly identified that our ODE is exact, which means we can go back and apply the methods that we've learnt in this, in this video. Okay, so let's do that. So thus, assume solution Y is contained in the following form. Okay, so for some big F, the solution Y is contained in this implicit form where C is a constant. In particular, we can assume that f sub x, df dx, is equal to this function. Oh, yep, equal to this function. And df dy is equal to this function, n. Okay, so now we're at a stage where we're trying to produce or construct this big F. We, in, we, we need to do two integrations. Integrate this with respect to X and integrate this with respect to Y. Okay, so let's integrate this with respect to X. Remember, we assume everything else but x is constant. So we're going to get um, x squared of y. Over here we're going to get x cubed y squared plus some sort of function of integration because partial derivatives are involved. So let's go with, uh, say, uh, g of y. The second expression here, integrated, will give us... Okay, y x squared plus x cubed y squared plus h of x. So now we're in a position where we've got general forms of this big F, but we want to compare these two things and choose g and h in an appropriate way. So let's compare these two things. Do they have any common terms? Well, 
Yes, they do. Have a common term there, a common term there, a common term there, and a common term. Ah, oh, I've left off something. Whoops, I forgot about that one over here. So when we integrate this, we'll get a plus y on the end. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we need to choose g and g of y and h of x such that everything here is is equal. So if I choose g of y to be y, then that takes care of that term. And I can choose h of x to be just the zero function. OK, so let's put everything together. So the solution y is contained in the following form. We just replace g of y with y, h of x with 0, so we're going to get y x squared plus x cubed, y cubed, plus 0, plus y equals a constant. OK, so again, a rather messy solution here in implicit form, but that's, that's the best we can do in, in many cases. OK. All right, so I'm going to leave you with something. At a, a little bit earlier in the, uh, in the video, I showed you this slide. And I, 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 I said, all right, well, if big F is defined by this rather nasty looking integral, you can show that these partial derivatives um, take on this form. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave you with a little problem. See if you can actually take the partial derivative of this and, and come up with these, these expressions here. Okay. All right, so that concludes our study of first-order differential equations. In the next section, we'll look at second-order differential equations.